everyone, and welcome to another Interstellar Mother. In the next couple videos, what I'm going to do is detail the building of this ship from the movie Interstellar. Interstellar is a movie that came out about a couple years ago here, and it is about a, a group of astronauts that head out into deep space uh, after finding a wormhole uh, to try and find a future home for the Earth's population. And one of the vehicles used in the movie is this Ranger that you see here. So one thing I enjoyed about this movie is that the technology that you see in the movie uh, is something that you can conceivably see being used in the near future. Um, you can see even the paint scheme is reminiscent of what you see with NASA vehicles today, particularly the space shuttle. Take a look and see what's inside the box. Okay, what we have here then are the um, upper and lower sections of the hull. And um, the uh, upper hull here is covered by these windows. And uh, we have a couple choices here. We can paint them black, or as I've seen other people do, uh, we can cut them out. And that's what I intend to do is to cut them out. Once we've extracted this plastic then, I plan to um, put in some clear styrene that will be painted black so they'll look like tinted windows. And um, then we've got the rest of the pieces here. These are just uh, odds and ends, of course, go into the hull. These are the engines here. Um, these are some side pieces. And then we've got uh, this uh, bar section here that goes uh, on the back end. And this looks like the bottom of the back end there. And then we have a couple other trees with uh, some more pieces here, including the landing gear. And then uh, another interesting piece here is um, they include a smaller version of the Ranger. Um, this is essentially what goes on top of the uh, rocket launcher. And looking closer here, you can see the windows here on this uh, version. And this apparently is a 144 scale version of the Ranger. So the colors I'll be using are going to be testers flat white and flat black. And um, there's a couple panels that are gray. Uh, really not much to it in terms of color. Um, also we'll be adding some weathering. You can see there's uh, some of this here. I'm going to do some kind of dry brushing to add that type of detailing. And then we'll add a wash. And there's some really good pictures of this uh, ship online. There was a display somewhere that uh, people were able to see the full-scale model of this uh, Ranger. So I'll be using that um, as a tool here to uh, uh, guide us along as we're weathering and, and uh, detailing the ship. I plan to uh, build a ship, by the way, with the landing gear, just as you see there. All right, so the first step, cutting out the windows. Okay, you can see the windows are coming along here. It's a little bit of a tedious process, but this is essentially what I'm doing. First, I'm taking my Dremel with a pointed grinding stone here, and I'm using that to thin out the plastic, so I'll apply it on the opposite side here. That makes it a little easier to drill through, because I'm taking a fine drill bit and drilling some holes along the perimeter. Uh, once that's done, I use an X-Acto knife, cut that free, and then use files to smooth it uh, down. Okay, and you can see I just popped out the interior there, and I'm just taking these files. I have some different files here that I can use to smooth the inside there. Okay, right. and we have now the windows all cut out, and you can see it turned out pretty well. Uh, the model has also been primed uh, with a light gray primer. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a number of different reference photos you can find online of this ship. Uh, these are featured on culttvman.com and were taken by Brian Nicholas. So when I get to this section, my plan is to paint an undercoat of a silverish or metallic color and then um, coat it with salt and hairspray and then apply the black and uh, dissolve the salt and hopefully we'll end up with something that looks similar to that. All right, so the hole's been painted white and uh, now it's time to mask off the windows. Uh, the rims around the windows are all black. So rather than using masking tape, I'm using liquid mask all. So it's all dry now, let's go ahead and apply the black paint. All right, so here we now have the windows. I can tell you this was not the easiest thing to do. Even with the liquid mask all, uh, the uh, lines were not very sharp. So I had to refine the black lines with a very thin, fine-tipped Sharpie. And um, that sharpened up the lines uh, quite a bit more. So um, moving on now to the black coloration, or the black panels, I should say, along here and here and the front of the ship. and. Um, so with that, I'm going to start the weathering process, and I will show you that shortly. Okay, so on the uh, studio model, uh, or the mock-up, you can see there's quite a bit of weathering here and here. 
And uh, so it appears it's a silver color that lies underneath the black there. So I went ahead and applied a silver color here. I used Tester's Steel first, and then I uh, used some masking fluid, which you've seen me use this before, this mask on, and uh, just dabbed it along the sides here and here and on the opposite side, applied the black and then rubbed the uh, masking fluid off, and that's what we're left with. So to further detail it, I am doing a dry brush technique, and you can see I've already started here. And again, just referencing the pictures, you can see I believe these are like the steering jets here. You see like these uh, wispy lines that are moving away from the steering jet there. So I'm just trying to duplicate that and just uh, taking some paint and deep in, dipping the brush into it and actually taking most of the paint off. I just rub it on a cloth like this here and uh, just apply it gently in this manner and uh, this is what it looks like. So let me go ahead and try the other side and I'll show you uh, how this technique works. All right, so we have a little bit of paint on our brush here and uh, so I'm just gonna gently kind of apply it and you can see it's already starting to show up here on the edge. So that's why I start off with are the edges first and uh, just kind of go around the entire area. And just do it little by little. Get a different angle here. And uh, you just kind of go around until it gets darker and darker. And then for the uh, lines that feather away from that, I just kind of you know, start here at the edge and just kind of brush away from it. So the next step now is to continue painting the black pattern. Uh, the instructions do come with a little um, painting mask. You just cut it out and I just placed it along the hull and used a pencil to trace it. Then that allowed me uh, the pattern to uh, tape off with some masking tape here. So not only was the back side taped off, but also these areas here as well. All right, so I'll go ahead and proceed and put down the black paint and we'll go from there. Okay, so you can see I've added the black paint and um, also started weathering certain sections here. And I decided to weather the model a little bit more than what's seen in the movie. Um, and so you can see I'm adding some there and I also added some weathering here on this back panel. Now if you look closely, the black paint looks a little sparkly and I think what happened was uh, I think I got it contaminated with uh, some uh, Alclad paint that I used on my last project, which was Mark 9 Hawk. And, um, but, uh, you know, it actually doesn't look too bad, so I think we're going to go ahead and leave it that way. And uh, so yeah, I'll keep moving along with that. But the other thing I wanted to show you real quick are the windows. Um, this is a clear piece of styrene plastic now that's been painted or coated with this uh, Tamiya smoke clear color and it was fairly easy to work with. Uh, I had to apply several coats um, and they dried fairly quickly and then I just trimmed different pieces here to fit into the model and uh, so I think it's gonna look pretty nice. All right so the next step now is to add a wash. I'm gonna continue to detail the surface and I'm gonna do all this before I put in the windows because I do want to coat everything with a, a clear coat. So. Just thought I'd take a second to show you how the wash works here now. So again, uh, this is basically paint diluted in water. Uh, I'm not using anything expensive. I'm just using this craft paint uh, that you see here. And I got this at Michael's. And uh, then I'm mixing it with a brown. So uh, probably about 10, 15% brown, the rest is black. And um, I would say it's probably like, uh, you know, uh, 10% paint, the rest is water. I mean, really, most of it's just watered down. So, um, to mix it up and just apply it onto the surface here now. And um, you just brush it off. Let me just move this out of the way. And here we go. So, I'm just going to apply it across the surface here now. And it will fill in uh, those panel lines, like so. Okay, and I'm just going to wipe this off with a towel and I'll just keep at it. Okay, and you can see that the wash is definitely bringing out the lines there, so uh, you can just make it as dark as you want. Again, just applying it here. This is like the third coat now. 
Okay, and then I just wipe it off with a towel. All right. So the panel lines are nice and deep, and the wash goes right into them, so it's doing a pretty nice job here. So the other thing I, I wanted to show you was this tool that someone um, told me about. And um, I can't remember what this is called, but it's a tool that you can uh, dip into a liquid, and uh, it holds it... It holds the fluid in this little pinpoint area at the very top, and then when you apply it to the, uh, for example, one of these lines here, uh, it delivers the fluid so that it will fill in the panel line like that. And you can see how it uh, just skirts along the surface there. And that really helps to bring that fluid into that uh, panel line, uh, but you can. Um, there are these little spots that occur when you dab the uh, tool down, so you just clear it up with a with a uh, Q-tip here, and uh, we can lighten that up a bit just by using the dry end of this Q-tip here, like so. So it's not as prominent. Okay. And uh, so you can see it does a pretty good job. So I still need to clean up a little bit more, but you can see how well it worked on this side. So that, along with the wash, is uh, really making these panel lines come out here. Okay, so here we now have the finished uh, top surface. Uh, the weathering now is in place. Um, I went a little bit heavier than what you see in the movie. Uh, I just decided to highlight more of these panels here. Uh, I just figured, you know, we have a heavy amount of weathering here. It just made sense to have a little bit more, so I went ahead and did that. You can see the windows are in place. Uh, I'll just show you them from the underside here. I uh, just clipped them and cut them to fit and glued them into place with just regular cement. And um, also dull coated it, by the way, before I uh, placed the windows in position there. So we're getting very close. I'm just going to go ahead and proceed with assembling everything. If I come across anything that I uh, feel is noteworthy, I'll let you know. Um, but I'll just go ahead and put things together and I will show you the finished ship in a second. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick my work on the base here. I'm not going to tape too much of this, um, but I uh, watched a few YouTube videos and I'll put a link to one in particular that I um, learned most of this from. But um, essentially I'm taking a wood base now and I'm applying some spackling that I got at uh, Ace Hardware. And just uh, making this texture here um, I embedded um, this uh, fake rock here and uh, then the next step will be after this dries is to um, coat it with a uh, mixture of water and wood glue and then I'll sprinkle some sand and uh, some other covering here and hopefully it'll look like a planet base. Um, so uh, I'll show you this when it's completed with the model kit. Okay everybody, and here we now have the completed model kit. Again, this is the Ranger from the movie Interstellar. This model is produced by Mobius Models, measures uh, about 10 inches from front to back, and is 172 in scale. Judging by the pictures that you find online of the uh, full-size mock-up, uh, once assembled here, the model does make a pretty good representation of the ship. So as with other Mobius kits that I've worked with, uh, there were no problems with piecing the model together. Uh, all the pieces seem to fit well. So as I indicated earlier, my goal was to detail the model with a little bit more weathering than what was seen on screen. Uh, again, I tried to go easy on it, uh, not make it too dark. Um, the wash worked really well, I thought, to bring out the panel lines that you see here. And I added just a little bit more uh, shading here with pastels. And I do think the dry brushing technique worked real well uh, to detail these black sections all along here and along the tail section. Uh, it doesn't look too overworn, uh, but just enough to make it look like the ship has been flown. I am happy also with the way the windows turned out here. Um, I think it looks much better than just painting them black. However, um, I did use the Tamiya smoke color, which really isn't necessary. I think in this case you could have easily just used black. Uh, it was a good experience using it though. I've never really used that before, but um, if I had a, an interior to highlight, or if there was a lighted interior, it'd be cool to be able to see through tinted windows. Uh, but ser since there is no interior and I painted the interior black, it just looks black. So I could have done the same with just black paint. But uh, again, I was happy that I tried it because I'd never used it before, and I'm definitely going to uh, utilize Tamiya Smoke with some other model kits I can think of here. 
And the other first for me with this particular project was building a terrain type base that you see here. Um, I've never done anything like that. Uh, I always thought they looked cool when I've gone to model shows. Uh, particularly these military builders, they build all kinds of elaborate bases to put their models on. So I thought I'd give it a shot here. And um, the tutorials I found online uh, were done mainly by guys that do gaming. Uh, they, um, I'm sure you uh, know of these types of uh, games that uh, utilize these little figurines and then they build their own bases to put these figurines onto. And there's all kinds of different terrain type features that they add to these bases. They're pretty elaborate. Um, so I'll put the link uh, to the video that I watched the most. And uh, again, very simple uh, materials. I uh, use this wood piece and frame that comes to already assembled together from Michaels. And um, that runs around uh, 13 bucks. However, uh, Michaels does have 40% off coupons that they uh, uh, print every week. So you can you know, get a discount on that. Um, and then just some spackling that I got from Ace Hardware, just uh, using my hands to mold the different features here. And um, also the sand I got at Michael's as well. It's just a, some um, fine sand. And uh, then the rocks I got from an old fish tank that I had. I had some pieces there from an old fish tank. I just broke them up a bit and created these rocks that you see here. The paint used was a gray primer that I purchased from uh, Ace Hardware. And it's just a basic gray primer. And then I uh, dry brushed a um, testers medium gray that I lightened up a little bit with white just to highlight some of the um, uh, detailing here and then I applied a wash the same wash that I used for the model kit just to darken up some of the uh, shadows and things and uh, then uh, that was pretty much it really uh, it was pretty pretty straightforward to put together and by the way I finished this within a day so you just got to make sure you have enough sunlight for the spackling to dry uh, because it didn't take too long for that to happen. But you have to make sure it's fairly dry. Otherwise, if you're applying some wash and that sort of thing, it's just going to absorb into the spackling and it just make it soft again. So uh, you just have to make sure you give yourself enough time to do that. Okay, well, it's time to rate the kit. And overall, you can see I'm giving it a pretty high rating. Regarding accuracy, uh, as you see compared to the pictures, it looked pretty accurate. I really didn't see any major faults with it. Ease of assembly, Mobius Models is good at making models that are pretty easy to put together, so I didn't find any issues there either. Likeability, I really enjoyed putting together the kit. And cost, you'll find it at around $30, so I'm going to give it a single dollar sign. All right, guys, that pretty much does it for now. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com or leave a comment here on my YouTube channel. As always, thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.